Don't be afraid to try things, don't be afraid to take the opportunities that come up. There's a huge consumer market among the disabled community. This is Glenn Cam here. <laughs> Emily's still here though. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. And um, for this monthly roundup video, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently and film it as a kind of video diary as I go along through the month because I've got so many things planned for my 40th birthday that it's gonna take me a long time to film one huge video at the end of it all trying to tell you about everything. So I thought if I do it bit by bit as a vlog as I go along, um, it'll be easier for me to kind of edit stuff together and it'll give you my immediate reactions to things and so on. So I hope you enjoy kind of looking at things this way for a change. The first couple of weeks of this month have been pretty relaxed really, which is nice in the build up to all this. I um, mean, you know, I've been out for a couple of walks as usual, just general walks around London, filling in the walking map that I've been doing for a few years now. And I've been working, of course, and we celebrated Mum's birthday too, which has been really nice. In terms of TV, I've seen Chris McCausland's Speaky Blinder show, which is uh, really good. I saw that in person last year, so it was nice to see it again on the TV. It was filmed at a different venue that I went to. It was the very last date on his tour they filmed it at. And yeah, it's still a very funny show. And um, I've been watching Some Mothers Do Have Them on DVD to celebrate the 50th anniversary of that show. And there's been a new interview with Michael Crawford and Michelle Detrice on BBC4, which has kind of seen the two of them reunited and reminiscing over the show, which was lovely. There was a repeat of an old documentary about the show and an interview that Michael Crawford had with Michael Parkinson which was nice too and I've seen the sports relief special as well again of course which isn't as good as the main series but it was nice to kind of just watch that to complete the set as it were so yeah it's a really funny show obviously with Frank Spencer kind of getting into all sorts of mishaps and the stunts they did which Michael Crawford did himself were just incredible I mean a lot of the stuff he did then you would never get an actor doing today because just health and safety and insurance just wouldn't allow it so what they got away with back then was just incredible but yeah it's a really funny show it's a classic that I'm not surprised has lasted this long. And then in terms of kind of non-comedy things, I've watched um, Secrets of the London Underground. That's still going on, so I'll review that next month in September when it's finished. And I'm also watching Series 3 of Doctor Who as part of my 60th anniversary celebrations of that show. I'm kind of gradually reviewing that as I go along, and I'll publish a long review post kind of in September at some point when I've finished it. But then in terms of the actual birthday celebrations, um, I've started those today on the 13th of August as I'm filming this. And I've just got back from seeing Sarah Pascoe at the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre, which is a venue I last went to five years ago, far too long, when I saw um, Peter Pan, an audio-described production of that. But yeah, it's been great to finally get back there. And we were blessed with the weather because you take your chances in a place like that that's completely open to the elements. It was lovely and cool and dry, which was nice. And yeah, she was really good, as I knew she would be from the shows I've seen her on TV, like QI and things. Her show is called Success Story, and it's about how her life has become kind of a success for her because she started off having difficulties, you know, with bullying and things. And even today, she still has therapy for anxiety and things like that. And it's great that she's open about these things. And yeah, she just talks about how she tried to get into TV and some of the famous people she's met and some of the mistakes she's made along the way. And there's also a lot of talk about the fact that she's a mother as well. You know, she's already got an 18 month old son who she talks about. and She's got another child on the way. She's just a great storyteller, really. You know, she's great at doing callbacks to earlier jokes and things and just making a nice, coherent and enjoyable story. It's consistently entertaining and funny and things like that. And you know, as someone who grew up in the 90s, I kind of agree with a lot of what she says and remember a lot of the things she talks about. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was a lovely way to start my birthday celebration off a good laugh and a good night out and yeah I'm looking forward to my next uh, treat. Okay so part two of this vlog is covering two days in a row because I got back late last night so I thought I'd cover both days today when I've not got back quite so late this evening and basically over the past couple of days I've met two of my very best London friends Claire and Emily who have treated me wonderfully. I mean, they're awesome friends at the best of times and they've really spoiled me this time around as well. So thank you very much to both of them for giving me lovely experiences for my 40th birthday. First of all, I met Claire yesterday and we went for a meal at Bill's in Covent Garden. That's a lovely restaurant and I had uh, their truffle chicken, two ways as they call it, because you have chicken cooked in two different ways along with some mash. And then I also had the triple chocolate brownie for pudding and I had a cocktail with it as well, which is very nice. So that was a lovely meal. And then we went to see a musical. We went to see... The Lion King, an absolute classic. I have seen it once before, as has Claire, but it was a long, long time ago, and neither of us had seen it with audio description, and it was 
incredible. We had a touch tour beforehand and just that alone was such an incredible privilege because all the people who were there, you know, the people who helped design and construct all the different puppets and the costumes and do the makeup and the hair and that kind of thing. There's so much thought that goes into it, so much passion and they're really keen to talk about it. They enjoy talking about it because they don't get the opportunity to very often, I suppose. And to be able to get close up to all these puppets and the costumes and the wigs and all that kind of thing, it was really, really fascinating. The amount of detail that's in there, the amount of effort they have to go to to make them, like threading individual hairs or brushes or putting little beads on or shells on, stuff like that. It's all very intricately done and a lot of things are tailored, obviously, for each specific actor. So, yeah, it's just really, really nice to look at all that stuff close up. You know, a lot of these details the audience would never see, you know, in the theatre. It's so far away on the stage, but without that kind of detail, it just wouldn't feel right anyway. So it is important to have it there, even if you don't appreciate that it's there. That's the thing. A lot of things in, like, theatres, whether it's costume design or even things like lighting and sound and music and things, the fact that you don't really pay attention to them in a way means they're working because they're just evoking the right atmosphere and emotions or whatever and you just don't notice it's just caught you in the moment so yeah a lot of people don't get the attention they deserve in the theatre so it's nice that we could meet some of those people and the show itself is just amazing I loved it first time all those years ago it's a lovely story it really is and the songs are just wonderful and the choreography and the way everyone operates the puppets and the scenery and everything and there's good laughs in there as well and yeah I, I just really really loved it it was wonderful to see it again and with the audio description as well and with the touch tour and everything it just helped me really engage with it to the fullest possible extent which is why I love going to accessible shows like this at the theatre which you know I could never do when I was young that kind of show really illustrates why it's so worthwhile why it's so magical so yeah thank you very much to Claire for that wonderful day I really appreciate that and then today I've been out with Emily as well. We didn't go to the theatre, although we are going to a theatre show. But um, for my birthday, she took me out to a place called Cinnamon Kitchen in Battersea. This is an Indian restaurant. She managed to get in there to do a press review. So we got a freebie in there, but it was a very filling freebie because we got to try their nine course sharing menu. Yes, nine courses. Obviously, they're not huge courses. They're relatively small plates, but still you get plenty of food spread over those plates. So and you get quite a variety as well. So it's like lamb and chicken and salmon and shrimp and there's a lot an ice cream type thing at the end and stuff so it was a nice variety and I was quite impressed that I liked all the courses as well you know I was going in there thinking well there's nine courses I probably won't like everything I don't know if I like things like you know salmon and shrimps or chutney and the things they were putting in it but yeah everything was genuinely nice I'm not just saying that because it was a freebie from Emily or a press review or whatever I genuinely did like every single dish I, I did eat every single one and yeah it was really nice it wasn't too spicy or anything it was nice and kind of mild there's a nice little kick in there sometimes but nothing too strong and the flavours really well done and the sauces and everything and yeah really impressed nice bottle of wine with it as well that we shared between us so yeah that was really nice it's in a lovely location um, under some uh, railway arches next to the Thames near Battersea Power Station as well that was right behind us so thank you very much to Emily for that and both Claire and Emily have also given me presents as well Claire gave me a very nice box of chocolates from Green and Blacks and Emily gave me an afternoon tea set from M&S so plenty of nibbles so yeah very very happy as I say I'm, I'm very you know, genuinely fortunate to have friends like them um, you know since moving to London you know I didn't know how many people I'd end up kind of making friends with when I moved here you know it was um, complete walk into the unknown I didn't, you know I might meet people you know at social events but not anywhere outside these things but to have friends like them you know I've had such you know close friendships with in very different ways it's amazing so yeah um, another successful couple of days looking forward to the next treat well, hello again. You join me after I've come back from another show, this time The Wizard of Oz at the London Palladium, which was fantastic, as I knew it would be. Very bright and colourful and lively and funny and a few little sad moments in there as well, of course. The heartfelt moments that move you and the songs are great. There's some you know from the film, of course, and a few new ones that have been written for the musical and the choreography looked fantastic. And even the lighting was great and the visual effects like video projections on the back screen and little pyrotechnics here and there occasionally. It was a real feast for the eyes and ears, that show, as you know, a good musical should be, and especially in an iconic venue like the Palladium. Dorothy was particularly good, it must be said, um, in particular because she was an understudy. And the thing about this particular Dorothy I learned from the usher walking in was that she actually came through midway through the show yesterday to replace the lead actor. So that's no mean feat to actually come on and play a role that somebody else was playing just minutes before you. To come on middle of the show and then carry on is just amazing. And she did the whole show today and she really was incredible. The way she sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow kind of sent shivers through me. She's got a really powerful voice. She was really, really good. And you know, even when she was saying goodbye to her friends from Oz at the 
end, I welled up a little bit. I did feel moved because you know, it really was very sweetly done. So yeah, very impressed with her. There are a couple of big names in particular in the show. The Tin Man is played by Ashley Banjo from the street dance group Diversity. He was very good and obviously got some moves in there. And then the Cowdy Lion is played by Jason Manford, the comedian and singer. And yeah, he was really, really good. And the thing about Jason Manford was that he came to the Touch Tour before the show to talk to us because this was an audio described performance. So he actually talked to us for a few minutes before we had to go off and get ready, which was really kind of him. He didn't talk to us individually. He just addressed us as a group, but he was thrilled that, that we were there. You know, he was explaining how in the past 20 years or so, he's discovered the joys of theatre really because when he was younger, he didn't go to it much. He didn't really see the point of it or, you know, just wasn't really into it. So, you know, when he discovered the joy of theatre, he learned how, you know, it was for everybody. And the fact that we were all there, you know, as visually impaired people being able to come to the show, he was delighted by that. So, yeah, it's really kind of him to do that. He's a really lovely guy. You know, I've seen him do stand-up live before as well. And yeah, he's really, really nice and a really good performer, really good singer. He really embodied the Cowley Lion wonderfully, you know, incorporating aspects of the character from the film that you instantly recognise, you know, the way he kind of talks and cries and things. And fantastic singer too, and dancer for that matter. And the touch tour was great. There was a lot of people there because this is the only audio described performance they're doing before the show goes off on tour. So in that sense, there was perhaps a few too many people really. It was quite crowded to do the touch tour. We didn't each get to see every single thing. Now I got to see quite a lot of things, which was lovely. I got to see the, the Scarecrow's outfit, got to touch and handle that and the lion's outfit and the helmet and the clawed gloves worn by the winged henchman of the Wicked Witch and other little bits and pieces like an axe and an oil can and things. So it was really nice to see so many things. But I didn't get to like handle the ruby slippers, for example, which are a key part of the show. Some other people did, but they didn't kind of get round to me. So that was a shame. You know, there's probably one or two other things I missed as well, but not to worry. I did get to see quite a bit of it and the audio description really helped too. Couldn't always necessarily hear it over the music, but then the music was so good I didn't mind that and I could look through my binocular, my little telescope to see what was going on. So yeah, it was really, really good. Really impressed with the performance. And talking of comedians, the one other TV show I mentioned that I saw recently is Dara O'Brien's stand-up show So Where Were We, which I saw live at the Apollo last year. It was nice to see a TV version of that. It was an edited down version and it was filmed at the Vicar Street Club in Dublin, which she's filmed shows at before. So yeah, it was nice to see an edited version of that show with all the big jokes in there, some of which I really remembered, like when he's trying to teach his kid to read during lockdown. There's a great little routine for that. And he's talking about his bad knee and getting massages and things. And then at the end of the show, there's a half hour routine all about how he tracked down his birth mother because he was adopted. And that's really kind of heartwarming as well as being told in a very fun way. You know, so it's not a dull story. There's a lot of humour in there. He really tells it well, considering it's a very personal story as well. He's very open and frank about it. So yeah, it's a really good show. I'm glad he's put a TV version out of that. I mean, he's not going to release it on DVD, he said, but they might stream it if you're lucky. So it'd be nice if they do that. But yeah, that and having Chris McCausland's show on the TV as well on Channel 4 recently. It's been nice that a couple of shows I saw last year I've been able to relive on the TV. So yeah, that's kind of the latest update, really. My aunt popped round this morning as well, incidentally, and gave me like a, a top, which was nice, and a card and some money. So that was good. So yeah, I'm just going to celebrate my birthday next. And the big day is now finally here, really. Well, the day after tomorrow as I'm filming this. So yeah, nice long bank holiday weekend, having some fun with a friend and celebrating my birthday, my big 40th. So yeah, I will um, share little vlogs with you along the way as I do the various things that we're going to be doing. So I will see you very soon for the next little bit. Okay, so a different location as you can see. Some of you may recognise that I'm in a Premier Inn because of the purple lighting they have above the beds in these places. Um, I'm at the County Hall Premier Inn in central London, so just around the corner from the London Eye. I can't see it from my window, but the London Eye is just around the corner, so it's nice and centrally located. And I'm here because my friend Simon, who I've known since school, we're very close friends, he's staying here as well for a couple of days to celebrate my birthday with me, which is very kind of him. So um, yeah, we've got a few nice things planned, and we've already started off our celebrations this evening by going to the Don Le Noir restaurant, which is the dining in the dark experience. And it really is completely pitch black in there when you go and have your meal. So it really does force you to focus Focus on the flavours and the textures and everything like that. It's a really interesting and enjoyable experience. You don't get told what you're given while you're in there either, which you know, kind of makes you, again, try and guess what you're having and everything. And it was all very nice food anyway. We chose to have just like meat for the main course. You, we had a starter and dessert as well, either side of it. But the main course was meat and we had a glass of wine with it as well. And yeah, when we found out afterwards what we'd had when, you know, the guy read the menu to us and there are pictures if you can see them as well. We were quite surprised, you know, some of the things we worked out were correct and some of the things we weren't sure about were actually very surprising in one or two cases. We really would never have guessed. But yeah, it was all really nice. The flavours were really strong and, you know, not overpowering, but the dishes are deliberately designed to be 
you know, very flavoursome, you know, lots of different flavours and textures and things. So it makes it really interesting. So yeah, it was very well worth doing. It's not cheap, but um, you know, you're paying for the experience as much as the food. And yeah, it was worth it for a one-off treat. It was definitely well worth a go. So yeah, I can definitely recommend that if you've been curious about doing it, it's definitely worth doing. And the fact that we, we are visually impaired, my friend and I, we were actually given a slight discount as well, because obviously it's it's the restaurant is designed for kind of fully sighted people to experience what it's like to have you know no vision and to rely on your other senses so the fact that there are visually impaired people going there as well to experience it yeah we got a very slight discount not huge but it was still a nice discount nonetheless so very generous of them so yeah it was a really enjoyable experience it was uh, definitely well worth doing and now my friend and i have got a few more things booked over the next couple of days in particular tomorrow which is my actual birthday and we've got a couple of things booked which we're really looking forward to so yeah i will report back tomorrow with how my actual birthday has gone i'm looking forward to it Okay, so this is my actual birthday today, and thank you to everybody who's been sending me birthday greetings. A lot of people getting in touch, that's very much appreciated. My friend and I have celebrated so far today by having a lunch cruise on the Thames, which was really, really nice. We got on a City Cruises boat by the Tower of London, and that took us up to Westminster, first of all. And as it turned around at the bridge there, the bloke started his commentary and told us about various things all the way back down to Tower Bridge. And it's a very interesting commentary and a witty commentary as well. There's quite a lot of laughs in there, typical British humour. As we got to Tower Bridge, we carried on going, but he paused the commentary at that point just to give us a chance to you know continue eating and chatting amongst ourselves and enjoying the view and stuff and then as we turned around at the bend where canary wharf is he then carried on his commentary from there back up to tower bridge so again lots more interesting facts so yeah that was really nice really entertaining and along the way we had lunch as well which was really nice delivered by a very smartly dressed friendly staff you know the service was wonderful so there was a little kind of bread roll with butter for starters and then for the main course we had a roast supreme of chicken which was really nice nice big chunk of meat and some nice vegetables with it and stuff and then the dessert was a lemon meringue tart which was also really nice and we had a glass of champagne each with it as well and some water to drink too and because we'd booked a champagne experience for two and got priority boarding as a result and window seats with it and we were actually seated right at the very front of the boat there's a dedicated area at the front with about six tables in it and we were at the very front most tables we had the perfect view outside the front windows which was brilliant and we were blessed with lovely weather for that as well which i'm really pleased about because you do certainly gamble when you book something like that so yeah we both enjoyed that my friend and i it was a good experience and i can recommend it and then we just went out for a bit of a walk and got ourselves a drink and relaxed a bit and we've come back to the hotel just to rest and freshen up before we go out again this evening because we're going to the comedy store near Leicester Square. And we've been there once before in the past at one of their improv nights, which was a lot of fun. It's a great atmosphere in there. So we're going to one of their stand-up nights tonight. So you get an MC hosting and they introduce various comedians. Um, according to the website, one is a big name that I recognise from the TV. And then there's a few others in there as well who I haven't heard of. And it'll be interesting to see. You know, We might not like all of them, but there should be at least one or two that we do like. It would just be an interesting experiment to see um, you know, what sort of acts they get there. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that. should be a good laugh. So, yeah. Lunch cruise went very well today and now we're looking forward to a good laugh tonight. So I'll let you know how it goes. Well, that was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed that visit to the comedy store this evening. Um, we had decent seats for it as well because we got there nice and early. So we got there just before seven o'clock before the doors were due to open. So we were a couple of the first people in the queue. And because of that, we were able to get decent seats. The staff were really lovely with us as well. It must be said, you know, we told them we were visually impaired and they made sure we found the things we wanted to find. But yeah, the premium area that we were sat in, it's basically a raised area a few rows back from the front. It's got kind of tables and ledges you can put your food and drink on. And so because we were there early, we were able to get the central seat with a table right in the front of that raised area so we had a direct line of view of the stage which was great and we got some food in as well to eat before the show because we had a meal deal as well so we were each able to get a main meal and two drinks already prepaid for which was nice so we got a couple of pizzas and shared them between us and they were very nice indeed and we had some orchard pig cider we hadn't tasted that before but that was nice and yeah then the show itself was very good a nice variety of different comedians the MC was a guy called Ian Coppinger and I Irish guy and he was very very good you can tell when someone's an experienced compare because he just made it look so easy you know and he was talking to various different members of the audience not us but people in the unallocated seats kind of in front of us really particularly the front row but also one or two people elsewhere so yeah he was uh, talking to various people about the things that they do and there was one really tall guy as well who was like towering over him this six foot ten bloke against you know Ian is like five foot something very short in comparison so that got a good few laughs and plenty, plenty of jokes along the way and yeah he was just as I say very good he even dealt with a heckler 
at one point. He wasn't a very good heckler anyway. Soon batted them away. And he was just, you know, very good at introducing each act, you know, getting the audience in the mood and stuff. So in terms of the acts we had, there was Michael Akadiri, who actually works in the NHS. And so he was talking about the birth of his child and also the fact that he hasn't got much hair and other bits and pieces. There was a female comedian whose name I didn't quite catch. And that's because there's kind of an open spot they have in shows like this where a comedian who hasn't performed there before can have a go, you know, come on stage and do that kind of thing. You know, they performed elsewhere, but not here. So she got a chance to do that and she was pretty good. So fair play to her. Then there was a guy called Marcus Birdman who is actually half blind, which was kind of interesting for my mate and I. So yeah, he made a few jokes in relation to that as well as jokes about various other things as well. So he was pretty funny. And then the first act after the interval was Ria Lina, which is the one name I had heard of before because she's been on Mock the Week and various other shows that I've seen on TV and one or two radio shows as well that I've listened to. So yeah, she was pretty good talking about getting divorced and the guy that she's been married to for 18 years who's like 20 years her senior and being single again and going on the dating apps and things so yeah she was pretty good and then the last act we had was a group of four guys called the noise next door and they were an improv group so they took various suggestions from the audience to do various different scenes for example the first thing was a penis enlargement business run by boris johnson so it ended up being called boris's johnson's so they sang a song about that and there was a sketch about being trained to use heelys and doing that in various different styles and things and they finished with a song about how certain things are sexy like the tube and oranges and things like that so lots of random things but yeah it was a good variety of action there's no one there who i'd necessarily go and see a full show by but in terms of a night like this yeah it was worth having that little selection there they were all good in their own way so yeah it was a really nice night it's a lovely atmosphere in that place you know it was easy to find our way around so yeah it was good fun it's been a, a lovely birthday we've had that lunch cruise um, earlier today and then just a little general kind of wander around and relax this afternoon and then the comedy store this evening so it's been a, a lovely day and i've obviously had some more messages and people come through as well as the day's gone on and yeah we've got another day together tomorrow my friend and i our last full day together tomorrow before i see him off on sunday but yeah good day today so i've really enjoyed that okay so it's the end of the next day and my friend and i have had another nice time together we had a nice relaxing morning really had a slightly later breakfast so we could have a bit of a lie-in and had a little walk up to Leicester Square again, as that's been our kind of haunt for this weekend in some ways. Um, so I had a little walk around there and a little walk up and around Covent Garden nearby as well, just to kill a bit of time, because we then went to the View Cinema in Leicester Square to see the new Mission Impossible film. And the staff in there were lovely, it has to be said. They were really helpful, helping us to find out where to go to the toilets and where to get the snacks from, helping us to get our drinks and stuff, and then showing us to our seats in the uh, screening room. So yeah, they were really nice there. All credit to them for that. And we had audio description headsets as well, which worked really nicely with the film. And yeah, it's a good film. It's a typical action flick, really. Um, there's some nice big sequences, of course. There's a big car chase, as you can imagine. And there's a nice long ending sequence on the Orient Express train, which is quite good. So yeah, it's nothing exceptional necessarily, but it's a good film. And obviously it's uh, part one of this particular film. So it'd be interesting to see part two that follows on from it in this particular part of the franchise. So yeah, we enjoyed watching that. It was a nice way to kill an afternoon. And then we came back to the hotel and relaxed for a little while. And then we went out again, back to Leicester Square, to a pub called the Bear and Staff, which had been recommended to us by my friend's wife, in fact, when she'd come over to stay with her family a little while back. And it's got good Google reviews as well. And we can see why it's lovely in there. We booked a table in the upstairs dining room, which is a nice cosy area and nice and quiet in terms of the music and stuff. So you can actually hear the conversations you're having, no difficulties there. And the food was lovely. We had the steak and ale pie each and I had sticky toffee pudding for afters and he had the apple pie. And yeah, we were very full by the end of it. And I also had a birthday voucher as well to use with them because I was signed up to their mailing list and so they actually sent a voucher to get a round of drinks in so we could spend up to £30 on a round of drinks minimum of £20 so we had a couple of drinks each over the course of our meal we both had cider first of all and then I had a cider and he had a rum of coke and yeah that ensured we got a full £30 discount which was nice so yeah again service in there was lovely too the staff were really nice and the food was lovely and so yeah we were very happy with that so yeah, it's been a nice uh, relaxing day. It's been good to see him again. He's going home tomorrow, but we're going to have a bit of lunch before he goes tomorrow, which will be nice. So yeah, I'm really glad he's come over. It's been a nice couple of days. It's just been a nice way to celebrate my birthday. And there's still little bits and pieces coming up even after he goes as well. So I'm not quite done yet, but this has certainly been the big weekend as it were. You know, the third of you know, my best mates that I've been meeting up with in recent uh, days. So yeah, really pleased by that. It's gone really well. So yeah, I will speak to you again very soon. Okay, so it's two days since my previous vlog, and that's because there wasn't a huge amount to mention yesterday, really. I had lunch with my good friend Simon and then saw him off at the station, and then met another good friend James from the Unoriginal Network in the evening. So that was nice. 
I could have gone home the same day, but I didn't really fancy lugging my case around to lunch and to the station with my friend. And if he did need any help getting back to the airport, then I'd be around to help him then, if need be. So I just thought it'd be easier to play it safe that way. He didn't need my help in the end. He got his assistance on the train fine and got the plane home without any issues. So yeah, because I was staying in the Premier Inn an extra night because of that, it meant that I was waking up in London on the bank holiday Monday. So I was right in the centre of everything already. And I thought, well, that kind of saves me from travelling in on busy trains then to do stuff, doesn't it, that day? And I haven't got any work to do later in the week because I've got time off. So I may as well just stay here the extra day and then go home on the Tuesday. So that's what I've done. I've basically just stayed here the extra night. You know, I didn't just book it last minute. I booked this as part of my booking in advance because that's what I thought of. So, yeah, I've basically made the most of the bank holiday Monday as well. And I've gone to see the Freddie Mercury exhibition at Sotheby's, you know, because I'm a big Queen fan. So it's been something I've been wanting to see all month. Mary Austin, his partner, is basically setting off pretty much everything from Garden Lodge where he used to live. So there's a lot of stuff there and it's really impressive. It was obviously very busy there because there's a huge amount of interest. A weekday would probably have been quieter. But I thought, well, I've got the time to kill. I'm happy to queue. And queue, I did indeed have to because the queue was around the block when I arrived shortly before opening time and when I say around the block I don't just mean one or two streets I mean around the whole block the queue was almost meeting itself at the front doors really you know the back of the queue was literally a few feet from the entrance where people had got to the front of the queue so yeah it was really long but you know it did move steadily to be fair you know it took about an hour to get around the whole block to get in which sounds like a while and it is but because it was steadily moving all the time it didn't actually feel too bad and we got given an exhibition guide by one of the uh, members of staff to look at while he went around you know it gave you the layout they basically commandeered all the view rooms in Sotheby's to display Freddie's paraphernalia and you know, there's so much of it but yeah the staff are very professional and everything was very professionally set up as you go through the exhibition there's a one-way system you go through to ensure you see everything and to keep everybody on a set path they do kind of move you on but without any pressure you know they basically say you can take as many photos and videos as you like but don't stop to read things and view things in excessive detail so you can look at everything get a nice look at everything but you can't just dwell on everything for too long because that's unfair on everybody else which is understandable so yeah it was a real pleasure and a privilege to kind of look around that. I spent about two and a half hours in there, took over a thousand photos and, you know, even deleting duplicates and any that are out of focus or whatever, there's going to be probably about a thousand photos left. And there was just so much in there, everything you could possibly imagine. Freddie had so much attention to detail and such exquisite taste and everything that literally every single item in there is worth looking at. And, you know, I could spend days, weeks, months looking at all of that in detail if given the opportunity. So just to be able to quickly glance at it all and take photos I can look at at my leisure later is lovely. There's things like Japanese art, for instance. He was a big fan of that. And lots of ornaments, especially of cats, because he was a big cat lover too. And lots of furniture and dining table setups and things from his kitchen, that kind of thing. But there's also fashion, clothes he wore at home, but also costumes he wore in his videos on stage and things like that. And there's pianos and guitars. You know, there's a couple of pianos, particularly one that he composed Bohemian Rhapsody on. And there's lots of awards they won in terms of, you know, gold records and platinum records and little trophies and other things and there's documentation from like the concerts they did and things like that and there's also lyric sheets near the end which are really fascinating so yeah I mean that's just scratching the surface I can't remember absolutely everything to tell you right here off the top of my head it was just really really nice in there so much to see I'm really glad that I got the chance to have a look at that it's definitely a once in a lifetime experience that is never going to be repeated because all this stuff is going to be spread about among private collectors I'm not going to be able to afford any of it I'm not going to try and bid for it because it's just going to go for such high prices it's ridiculous even the, the book that tells you a bit about a lot of the items and just you know the general history of Freddie's life at Garden Lodge and that kind of thing that's like 50 quid for a huge hardback book but I'm probably still going to get it as a final birthday treat to myself and as a special souvenir because I'm a big Queen fan but yeah it was just a real pleasure to see it all it's so nicely laid out and as I say the staff are really professional it was very nicely put together and just a real pleasure and a privilege to see it all and then later in the day in the early evening I went to the actual Garden Lodge which is just up the road from Old Court Station there's nothing to see there really you know it's just a high wall with a high fence on top because so many Queen fans over the years have tried to get a glimpse inside that they've had to take steps to ensure their privacy which is totally understandable but nevertheless it feels really special to be near it just to be outside that building where you know someone so prestigious once lived and did such incredible work and lived such an incredible life and being able to see the contents of that house in the exhibition it 
made sense to just be in the area where it all came from. So yeah, it was nice to be there. It felt really special to be there. And a passerby very kindly took a photo of me by the gates as well. So yeah, even though you can't see anything, it's still well worth a visit as a Queen fan. It's one of those pilgrimages you have to make. And we've now jumped forward a week because I want to show you that I have indeed got the book that goes with the exhibition and the auctions. I got it because it is very limited edition. They're going to stop taking orders for it after the 13th of September. And, you know, I'm a huge Queen fan and this is a once in a lifetime souvenir for a once in a lifetime exhibition. So I thought, well, why not? I mean, I hardly ever buy books because I'm visually impaired, so they're difficult to read. But I can take pictures of the pages of text to read them anyway. And as I say, the pictures are lovely. So it'll be nice to go through that slowly, bit by bit in the weeks ahead. I'm still going through my photos as well from the exhibition. I just started going through them properly, really, because I I've been sorting out lots of other stuff for this blog and my blog post over the past week or so. So I will get around to making a post about the exhibition and some of my favourite items from it. But I think I'll get this favourites post out of the way first because this has got very, very long as I knew it would. So yeah, I'm really glad I got to see that exhibition and that I've got the book to go with it. So I can do a little review of the book then if I do a little post later on as well. And then there's just one more thing to mention that I did over the past week. And this is a kind of an advert, kind of product placement thing, but it's relevant because it involves audio description in London and it is genuinely great. But I was offered a complimentary ticket to go and have an audio described tour at the Frameless Gallery in Marble Arch and this is a big immersive art gallery and the audio described tour was led by Jonathan Nash who a lot of you will know if you've been to audio described shows in London and it is genuinely stunning I'm not just saying that because I got a free ticket it's genuinely very impressive it was much better than I anticipated or expected it to be because when you hear that things are immersive it can just sometimes mean large screens and that's it you don't really feel like you're involved in it but this does that the artworks really do surround you in here so there are four different rooms basically and they all display different works of art, kind of different sequences of works of art in very animated ways as well, in very extensively animated ways. It's really impressive. And the projection technology they use is really impressive as well. You know, it's actually new technology that's kind of been tested in this gallery, really. And it's very effective, really. There's not a lot of shadows that get in the way, for instance. I'm not blinded by the lights and stuff. And so... Of the four rooms you get taken through, the first one we went into had artworks on the walls and on the floor, and there was mirrored trenches around the edge of the floor as well, and mirrored ceilings too, so everything was kind of reflected a little bit. And then the second room was quite interesting because you had artworks displaying on the walls, but in order to get them to display on the walls, you had to kind of kick stuff around the floor, like digital elements on the floor, like petals or splashes of paint or whatever it may be. You kind of move around the floor to kind of kick them up to the walls to form these paintings. So it's particularly great for kids because, you know, they can just run around and get these things moving around. I mean, if you don't do anything at all, then the paintings will gradually form themselves. But it does have genuine interactivity and the motion sensors technology in there is really impressive to kind of track where everybody in the room is. And then the third room we went in was a huge room, again, displaying lots of different artworks. You know, I remember in there, there was a big scene of like a field and a meadow and an Italian village. And then there was a volcano erupting as well and stuff like that. And the music around the volcano got quite powerful. Indeed, in all the rooms, there's a lovely kind of music soundscape that fits with it really well. For our audio description we were actually using headsets so we could adjust the volume to get over like the loudness of the music if need be because it would have been impossible for Jonathan to talk to us just with his normal voice so using the headsets while he had a microphone was actually really useful that really worked well and then the final room we went into was all about kind of modern abstract art which I'm not normally into but in this room because it's animated in the way it is it is actually really nice and quite calming as well and because there's basically lots of gauze screens in the room huge gauze screens so they're sort of semi-see-through as well and they're formed in kind of a slightly maze formation so you kind of walk in and out of them and can kind of explore the room at your leisure so it gives it kind of 3d feel as well and all the screens display slightly different elements of the same artworks that are being shown so you can kind of walk around the room and see things from slightly different angles and in different ways and things it's really impressive so yeah the whole gallery we kind of spent about i think an hour and a half kind of watching every loop in every room because some of the sequences are quite long ones at least 20 minutes long and yeah it was just really impressive we really really enjoyed that so i can definitely uh, recommend giving that a go their next audio described tours on saturday the 7th of october and advanced tickets can be bought for adults for 25 pound children for 15 pounds or there's a group discount for four or more people carers visit free with a paid ticket and you can email access at frameless.com to arrange group bookings and get more information in general and yeah that brings us to the end of this epic vlog and there's an epic blog post to go with it as well full of lots more information about the things i've mentioned here and so all that remains to say is a huge thank you, really. Firstly, thank you for watching this, whether you've watched the whole video, very well done if you've done that, or if you've jumped to different bits that you're interested in from the chapter points, whatever. You know, and likewise, you know, thank you for watching all of my videos and reading my blog posts and following me on social media, etc. It's really much appreciated. It makes doing this very worthwhile. You know, I know it does inspire some people as well. You know, I've had parents, you know, come to me over the past few years 
know, saying, you know, thank you for showing that a person with anorexia can lead a positive and successful life. Because when you have a child with a disability, it is very daunting, even more so perhaps than having a child in general. So I'm pleased that I can offer reassurance to people that, yeah, things you know, can work out for the best. You know, if you find things that you're kind of passionate about and really enjoy doing and you meet kind of other people through it who like similar things to you, then so much can come from it. You know, as I've discovered over the years, you know, my life has changed so much over the past 40 years, just looking back over it, thinking about it recently and doing that montage at the beginning of this video as well. You know, it just really brings home just how much things have changed. And, you know, I'm really hugely, genuinely grateful, however soppy and cliche it may sound, to everybody who's played any part in my life over the past 40 years because you've all helped to shape my life you know in the way it's become for the better you know I started off as a really shy kid who was bullied at school thought I was worth absolutely nothing thought I was the one in the wrong and just you know wouldn't make any friends wouldn't get into relationships or any of that stuff didn't do, wouldn't do all the fun stuff that other people do but you know from just working hard on my schoolwork and gradually making friends over the years gradually building my confidence and my independence and you know going away to university going on holidays with people to different places getting a job and then moving to London and making you know new friends up here and going to all the described shows and tours and things and doing public speaking and you know making media appearances and you know doing an ab sale and all sorts of other bits and pieces there's so much I've done over the years and I just never would have expected it all as a kid and you just really don't know what fate has in store but you know if you make the effort to get out there if you can find something that you can get stuck into that you really like doing and capitalize on that and you know make friends through that and just be good to people and just you know be someone who's respectful and you know can be trusted then you know, the world is your oyster, you can achieve so much. So yeah, I'm really proud of everything I've done over the years. It's you know, it's, it's been hard sometimes now and again, as it is for everybody in life, you know, fate has thrown me a few curveballs here and there, as it likes to do with everyone. But you know, everything has kind of made me come out stronger afterwards. You know, if I can get through certain things I've been through in my life already, then it feels like, you know, I can get through lots of other things as well, because I kind of think, well, I've been through worse in some ways, you know, in some situations. So yeah, it's been really nice. I'm I'm really proud of how far I've come. And as I say, genuine gratitude to everybody who's played a part in it. However close you've been to me, even if you just chatted to me briefly or something, just to say, you know, thank you or whatever. Yeah, it means a lot. It means a lot that people kind of trust me and respect me and like me as a person. And, you know, they like what I do and they like to meet up and they just like to follow me, whatever it may be. And yeah, I just wanted to share that big, huge, genuine, heartfelt thank you as a conclusion to everybody who's played any part in my life, big or small, over the years. You've all helped to shape me into the person that I'm proud to be today. And for that, I'm genuinely, eternally grateful. So let's see what fate has in store for the years ahead. You know, so much has changed over the past two score years that anything's possible over the months, years, decades ahead. And it's going to be fun finding out. And I hope you'll continue to share in the journey with me. It is actually a great pleasure to share it with you. So yeah bye for now and thank you very much for everything see you soon party boat. Yeah.